and we offer great internship programs for folks leaving the military. Um, so the military has what they call the career skill bridge program where they can come and work for us for up to six months while they're transitioning out. Uh, and so we help them, they kind of, depending on whether they want to be on the more of the corporate side or they want to go launch a new market, uh, they kind of, you know, shadow along. And then if they want to go launch a new market, like we just had a guy who was a, uh, served with me, he was a ranger instructor down at Fort Benning. Uh, he's going through the program right now and he and his family are moving to Savannah and he's going to become the market director in Savannah and kind of really build out that market for us. What's up, everybody? My name is Mike Shogren here with my co-host, Emmanuel Pani. We're part of a group of specialized real estate investors you've probably never heard of. We didn't start with deep pockets or wealthy families, and we don't rely on 401ks, mutual funds, or traditional real estate investing. In fact, many of us don't even own the properties that fund our freedom. If you ask the money experts out there, they'd say what we do is impossible, yet it's happening every single day. It's happening through a new niche called short-term rentals. We are Short-Term Rental Nation, and these are our secrets. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Short-Term Rental Secrets Podcast. I'm your host, Mike Shogren, here with my main man and brother from another mother, Mr. Emmanuel Pani. What's up, B? My brother, good to see you as always. Um... Man, life is busy, bro. Like, I don't, I don't know what's going on. Actually, I do know what's going on. Just life is busy. And, and all these things that I've been wanting and manifesting for so long are all happening at once. Um, and I find myself having to be like, okay, okay this is what you asked for, right? right. <laughs> so, no sleeping a lot and just kind of running, running crazy uh, most of the time. Uh, we are onboarding two properties. One of them actually went live on my IG the other day. The family did a whole Walt Disney team. So every room is a different team. And the wife just went all out. She, she drew things. So there's little accents and things everywhere. Um, they listen to the podcast as well. So it's really awesome to see local people that listen to the show reach out for us to manage properties and actually do what we talk about on the show and, and not just go for the cheap, just quick, and really putting a lot of thought and care. Um, the husband made a little fire pit outside shaped like the Mickey Mouse ears and stuff. And they have nice. big chairs and little chairs. And, and then, so it's just like awesome. You know what I mean? I'm like, they thought about everything. And um, I went up there for, for pictures that day and I messed up. I got there like an hour and a half early. So I actually got to like hang out at the property and like sit around and work because I, I always bring my laptop everywhere now just in case I get a free hour of work. Um, and it's amazing, right? It's amazing to just like kind of sit in, in a property and just getting to see all the work that people put in it and getting a feel of what our guests are going to feel when they're, when they're there and getting to like go through the rooms and I sit on the beds and just open everything and the drawers and you know what I mean so it's just like it makes me happy you know and it makes me happy they were gonna make them a ton of money um they moved to Vegas recently so that they're kind of giving us the property to run for them while they're away um I'm just Love excited it. man it's, it's awesome. they get those pregame jitters gone yeah yeah they're excited you know they're just yeah but what's funny is like our photographer was like, I've taken a picture of eight, nine million dollar houses and I like this house way better because it's just so cool and you can see all the thought that have been put into it. Um, and I'll upload pictures of it on my on my IG when I get the, the professional pictures back, but it looks amazing. So I'm very, well, very excited. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. How are you guys? We're good, man. We're good. We're uh in the process of starting to onboard two more properties for September. Nice. Um, even though I keep saying I'm not adding any more properties every single week, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> opportunity <laughs> came up and uh, I went and actually looked at another like boutique hotel this morning with some of my partners, but I don't, it's not the right fit. And just real quick, just for clarity, when I say that. So one of the things that you want to think about, if you want to do this at a commercial property with multiple units, one of the things that you want to think through is, how easy, how easy is it for guests to navigate to their rooms? And this is a really cool property, like historic property right in Concord, Mass, which has a ton of history, you know, going back to the American Revolution and all sorts of cool stuff. But 
it's an old property and there's a lot of internal hallways, a lot of rooms. Like there's no way I could create a seamless check-in experience without having somebody on the ground. And it was only six units. So the revenue wouldn't justify having a full-time employee there. So just for context, those are some of the things that I look for with some of the multi-unit buildings in the hotels. How yeah. easily can somebody get and navigate to their rooms? Cause you, nobody wants to get lost like after a long day of traveling. So, yeah, no. And that's such a like little thing, but it makes all the difference, right? Because it's like when you realize what it takes to make an experience, you start thinking about all those things, right? Like, hundred percent. Well, I think E just froze, but with that, I want to get into today's episode. Today, we have Mr. Joseph Riley with us. Who I'm pumped he was able to make it. He had a little bit of a doggy emergency uh, with his dog giving giving birth to some pups this morning. But thank you for being here. So. Joe founded Patriot Family Homes to meet the need for affordable, reliable housing in the South, particularly near military bases. He's a captain in the Army. Uh, he's deployed with the Ranger Regiment to Afghanistan and Ukraine, and he, pre he previously served on the National Security Council at the White House. And uh, I can tell by your bio that <laughs> you're a pretty humble guy because you've got some badass stuff going on in here, but you just write it in here so nonchalantly. So first off, I want to thank you for your service. And uh, welcome to the show. Well, thanks so much for having me. I'm uh, really, really excited to be on and uh, uh, love to hear all the great things that you and E are doing. Uh, that's pretty cool. Uh, Absolutely, man. Your mic's a little low. You want to pull that closer to your mouth? Yeah. There? Yeah. Is that better? Much better. There we go. I don't think we heard anything that you were saying. So, okay. No, I just said I appreciate everybody being flexible. Uh, probably not the ideal recording uh, scenario to be out in my car outside of a. Uh, the 24 hour vet hospital, but, uh, we also have a German short hair pointer and we've, uh, this is her second litter of puppies and she had just a few complications. And so we had to kind of run down here this morning. So everybody in the short term rental industry is, and in the military <laughs> from my previous life is very well aware of just learning how to, you know, roll with things on the fly. So I appreciate y'all being flexible. A hundred percent, man, a hundred percent. And, um, why don't you, kind of catch us up on how you got started in this business. Like what got you into short-term rentals and then what does your business look like now? And then we'll let the conversation go from there. Yeah. Interestingly enough, given everything that's happened in the world right now, it was actually on a deployment to Afghanistan. Um, so I deployed my wife travels kind of Monday through Friday for work. So there was no reason for us to keep our house in the special operations world. The uh, deployments can be a little bit less predictable in terms of length. So you can't really put a traditional 12 month, you know, tenant in. Um, so instead, you know, we just left all the furniture in the house and listed it on Airbnb and HomeAway. This is when we were down at uh, Fort Benning, Georgia, uh, in, near uh, outside Columbus, Georgia. Um, and so, you know, realize there is a big need for this, no shocker around military communities, given how transient the population is coming and going. And then particularly at Fort Benning, is it being a basic training location, a lot of families coming in to kind of see their new soldier graduate, enter into the army, um, so we started with that house, uh, and then, you know, started adding more and then kind of went from, as I would move from base to base, we would go, uh, from base to base. Um, and then, um, when we, uh, you know, actually kind of where we really took scale and kind of what became our secret sauces, right. As we were about to get another 10 or so new properties, uh, the army said, surprise, you're going to Ukraine. Uh, so I thought that was going to be the end of me because at the time we owned everything, right? And we self-managed. Um, and so, you know, I was like, how am I going to manage these short-term rentals from a shipping container in rural Ukraine? Uh, and the answer was that several of the spouses of, of, of guys I was deploying with uh, were interested in managing the things back in the U.S. And that kind of unlocked what has been our, again, I, what I would say is our secret sauce, which is relying on this fantastic kind of cadre of uh, military spouses who are way overqualified, underemployed, um, but love to kind of help give uh, great experiences to guests as they're coming and going. Uh, and so then we kept growing. Uh, my last assignment was at the White House and then I left there in January. And since then we've kind of tripled in size. Right now uh, we're in Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, Alabama, Tennessee, Georgia, Florida, Mississippi, and Texas. That's incredible, man. And how many units is that up to for you now? Uh, we're about 150 different properties. So I love it. I love that. And what, so initially you were saying that you owned the, the bulk of your portfolio. Now, what model are you going with? Are you 
managing or you rental arbitrage and you buy in still? Like, what does that look like for you guys? Uh, our accounting and ops team wants to kill me because the answer is we're still doing all three. So mm -hmm. we started out owning, right? And then when we would run out of capital, then we would start doing a rental arbitrage model. Uh, so leasing and then subleasing. And then some of the landlords who we were, you know, leasing from came to us and said, hey, you know, how are you making money paying our rent and still and, and still doing well? And so then they asked us to start managing for them. And now we have a ton of military families um, who similar to us as they kind of PCS and move around the country, uh, ask us to come in and manage um, um, manage them uh, uh, manage the you know properties for them whenever they PCS from one base to the next. That's great. And it, it's ironic because I think you're the first person that we've had on the show that really is focused on STRs around military bases, but in the, all my teachings and trainings and all that stuff, I specifically call out like nine different traveler profiles. One of them is military bases for the exact reasons that you just talked about. There's a ton of transient living going on there you're getting deployed you're moving around you're getting shipped around and so are is all is your entire portfolio focused around that or have you guys branched out to different areas yeah so we've we've branched out beyond just military bases so you know for example we're in birmingham alabama which has no military base mobile we're outside of dc in the kind of shenandoah valley in a more traditional vacation market and then we look for a lot of stuff like pensacola and savannah which are military towns, but also big vacation towns. Um, so kind of a sweet spot for us is if there's a military base there and a vacation community, uh, then that really kind of allows us to run both our off-platform stuff through our own kind of networks through the military, you know, particularly for some longer term stays and stuff, uh, but then also picking up the normal vacation traffic that you'd have in those markets. For sure, for sure. And so we've got 150 properties you just got off of active duty. So you've been active duty for a while now while you've been building this thing up. And one of the biggest things that we hear is, man, I don't know if I have enough time to do this. And you had alluded to how you were building some teams. So like, what did that evolu evolution look like as you were building that up? And then what is kind of your operations and team look like now to, to run that? Yeah, so I started out, you know, when we started out, it was just my wife and I doing everything. And then the first thing we did when, you know, when I had that deployment is, uh, and we'd already gotten a cleaner at that point, right? But we needed somebody to kind of do, you know, the guest communication uh, and facilitating and resolving any issues on the ground um, while I was away. And so the first person we hired was, you know, kind of a, you know, one stop shop of, uh, you know, helping set new homes up. Cause we actually, when I was in Ukraine, we went from five, five to 30 properties while I was in Ukraine. Uh, and so she would help coordinate setups, delivery of furniture. She'd also do, you know, kind of coordinating the cleaners, was helping resolve guest issues. Um, and then ultimately, obviously, as we got bigger, we then had to start becoming more and more, you know, kind of siloed and segmented. So we've got about 25 team members now. Um, and uh, not counting the kind of 1099 and other vendors that we use on the ground for cleaning and maintenance and stuff. Um, so we've got an acquisitions team uh, and the acquisition team is split between those who focus on houses that we're buying because we're still buying a lot of properties, those who focus on the kind of lease rental arbitrage model, and then those who focus on uh, the pure management uh, setup. Uh, so that's on the kind of acquisition side. Uh, we're fully integrated. We run for the investors that work with us. We can also oversee the renovations. So we have a renovation shop and some traveling construction crews that go around and do that. Um, and then we have two warehouses in Tennessee where we warehouse all of our furniture. Uh, and then we ship out from there. And then we've got some, you know, a kind of person who coordinates all our shipping and delivery out of the warehouse. Um, so I'm just kind of going through the life cycle of the property, right? Acquisition renovation, furnishing it. And then on the management side, our management arm is kind of divided between those who, a uh, guy who kind of runs our on the ground operations with managing all the cleaners and maintenance folks. And then another person who manages all the uh, customer, you know, engagement, the kind of communications, call center, all of those issues. I love it. So in a hundred- right, My Wi-Fi just died on me today. You're good, brother. For the um, 
on the guest communication side, are you outsourcing that to like the Philippines or using local people or what does that look like for you? I think you said you had a call center. Yeah. All military spouses. So, um, you know, it's, uh, again, we're very, very blessed. You know, it's a group of about, uh, I'd say 12 to 14 who, you know, kind of pull different shifts here and there and they do a lot of other stuff as well. Uh, but army, army spouses, mil, uh, Marine Corps, we have probably more Marine Corps spouses now. And when we started, I was, it was a all army operation and the Marines have just kind of slowly infiltrated and taken over. Um, but, uh, so, uh, yeah, that, that, that's who does it. We don't have anything outsourced out of the country. I love that, man. That, that's just freaking awesome. Like it's, it's true to like the core and to the branding, like through and through that, like, you know, you guys are a military family. You wanted to focus on servicing other military families. Now your team is based in military families. That's freaking awesome. Like, I love that. Yeah. And we offer great internship programs for folks leaving the military. Um, so the military has what they call the career skill bridge program where they can come and work for us for up to six months while they're transitioning out. Uh, and so we help them. They kind of, depending on whether they want to be on the more of the corporate side or they want to go launch a new market, uh, they kind of, you know, shadow along. And then if they want to go launch a new market, like we just had a guy who was a, uh, served with me, he was a ranger instructor down at Fort Benning. Uh, he's going through the program right now and he and his family are moving to Savannah and he's going to become the market director in Savannah and kind of really build out that market for us. So in anticipation of doing that, you know, we've probably acquired around 20 or so properties there the past, you know, 60 days or so. That's amazing. So what does that look like? Like, let's say you have somebody that wants to open open a new market. And I love how organized you guys seem to be. So does it, the, do they get like an actual framework as to like, this is what you're supposed to do. Like, this is what our, our homes look like. Do you guys help them with all the furnishings? Do they have a, a liberty to kind of furnish them how you want? Or do they get like very much like, I'm going to open a, McDonald's franchise. This is this is the template you use. This is the furnishings you use. We're gonna ship them to you from our warehouse. What does that look like for you guys? Yeah, it's less. You know, it, so the two models. One in which if someone comes to us and says, "Hey, you know, basically I want to be on salary, and you know, I want to kind of have a you know kind of clear structure and pattern," is particularly those who are coming out of the military, right? That may not be experienced in the industry themselves. So just kind of truly breaking out on their own would be a little bit of a, of a leap. Um, so in, the, in that instance, it's probably a little bit more directed from us in terms of you know, sending everything out, helping underwrite and select the inventory, interacting with owners, uh, if it's a managed situation or landlords, if it's a lease situation. Um, so that's one model. You know, we've also got some that come to us that are, you know, much more experienced. Uh, and in that instance, it's more of a franchise approach, right, where they are truly kind of coming in with an existing, you know, set of, you know, expertise and networks and properties, uh, and then kind of taking advantage of our back end support on the guest side on the pricing. Uh, access to inventory, you know, that we can get at discounted prices because of the bulk that we're uh, bulk business that we're doing. So that's, that's the kind of two approaches, someone who comes in and with no background or context, just interested and wants to learn. In that instance, it's a little bit more kind of directed versus someone who's coming in already has some level of experience and is really just help. We're looking for some kind of external support, uh, to kind of help them scale. Uh, and that could be again, on a capital side, on a, like, you know, kind of, uh, G and A stuff, piece uh messaging kind of guest communication piece so variety of different flavors on how that works yeah i love that um what what do you guys have in that warehouse like those two warehouses like what do you usually buy i mean you don't have to tell me a list but like what do you buy like all the towels pots and pans so everything is bought in bulk like everything that you possibly could need for the unit you have them all in a centralized warehouse Absolutely. So yeah. when we when we go to send a new house, we put literally everything that goes into that house to include the toilet paper, soap, shampoo, you know, towels, sheets, you name it, fake plants, you know, whatever, you know, the only thing that we will, depending on the level of, and then we have these kind of traveling setup teams that are kind of like almost nomadic. And, you know, they're sometimes younger people, sometimes older people whose kids have left the house and they now want to kind of be on the road and kind of see different parts of the country. 
And so they'll just pop from city to city and do these setups for us uh, and live in the home as they're setting it up. Um, and so the, the one thing, the, the two things that we don't put in the warehouse as much are curtains and art, um, because oftentimes we wanna, you know, we, we've got a basic set of mirrors. You know, my, my wife says that everybody's favorite piece of art is themselves. So, you know, we always put art in the homes. Uh, and uh, I mean, always put mirrors in the home. So those are pretty standard, but then we like to let the local, you know, you know, go around through the local area, kind of picking up some more kind of bespoke art. And then the curtains and curtain rods, we don't always send just because it's very difficult to predict all of the lengths and sizes of curtains and curtain rods that are needed. Yeah, that makes sense. Um... So what kind of, what, what kind of, and I apologize because my Wi-Fi was, was all over the place earlier, but so are you guys mostly East Coast space or, or are you covering the entire country or, or what, does, what does that look like for you guys? So we offer two types of management packages for those that we're managing. One's a digital only package and then the other one's a full service. The full service package, you know, we've either it's either got to be in a market where we currently are or we've got to have a pathway to scaling up to at least you know six seven properties pretty quickly um and so uh our current ge you know physical footprint of where we actually have boots on the ground is virginia north carolina south carolina tennessee alabama georgia florida mississippi texas uh and potentially indiana before long um, so that's kind of where we have a physical presence um looking to push into looking to move into pennsylvania uh as well but uh di on the digital side you know we we will and you know manage anywhere and we have some members on the team who are you know you know spanish speakers so if, if there's a need for that as well uh you know we, we we can do that also what what is the digital what what's included in that you said like the full package and the digital so what's the main difference between those two packages so digital is basically we take them up until the guest hits the door right and then from the time the guest shows up they the responsibility to kind of resolve any issues whether it's getting a plumber out hvac issue not half satisfied with the clean need additional amenities whatever it is right like we don't do anything with the cleaning or any of the on the ground ops now if they get there and they send us a message says hey i'm not happy with the clean or hey the ac's broken then we just take that and drop that as a ticket into, you know, the owner or whoever's running the, the on the ground piece. And then of course the full service package is they show up, they're not happy with the clean or they got an issue with the HVAC, then, you know, we're sending one of our vendors out there to address that and coordinating all of that resolution. Awesome. Um, what do your systems look like? You, you just said we will drop a ticket. What, what does that mean? Where does the ticket get dropped? You, you guys, have a Slack channel or what kind of technology? Yep. Yeah, yeah, we're Slack, Asana, and then we use Guesty as our property management software. So awesome. kind of depending on what the issue is that we're addressing, go through one of those three formats. And then of course, we've got some, you know, some more uh, seasoned uh, homeowners that, you know, will want an email or a phone call, so. I love that, seasoned. Which I assume means older when you say season, right? <laughs> That's right. So where do you see this going for you guys? Like, what is your vision? What's your goal with this, with this business? I mean, we want to take it, you know, you know, continue to push across the rest of the country and internationally as well. We've got several of the military families coming out who are particularly interested in, you know, one day, you know, they want to start in the U.S. and, and kind of build a market in, you know, like for example, our market director in Savannah really would like to go to Brazil. Uh, he spent a lot of time in Brazil. His dad was in the oil industry. And so he and his wife kind of want to build up a base of support in, uh, you know, kind of base there in Savannah. And then, you know, might, you know, hire in someone to kind of replace him. And then, he, you know, he would move on and, and want to manage in Brazil. So, uh, you know, we, we feel very strongly. We want to continue to do all three of those types of, um, owning, leasing, and managing. Uh, we also, uh, you know, we're, we like to say we're the Walmart of the short-term rental industry, which might not be the most exciting thing to tell someone. And what does that mean for us? Uh, you know, we go to a lot of non-vacation 
markets, right? So we're in Montgomery, Alabama, Mobile, Alabama, Huntsville, Alabama, you know, Birmingham, Columbus, Georgia, Columbia South, Clarksville, Tennessee, all these places that are not vacation areas. So in the same way that Walmart got its start, right, by not going and necessarily competing with the JC Penney's and the Macy's and the kind of prime markets, but instead going out into the kind of tertiary markets. That's where we're trying to go to kind of hone our discipline from an operational standpoint, because uh, there's less fat on the bone, right? It's easy to manage a million dollar, you know, vacation home in Tahoe and take 30% of that, right? You know, of what, it, of what it generates. Much harder to go in and try to provide a consistent level of service on a $125,000 house in Montgomery, Alabama. Um, so one is the markets we go to, two is a light footprint. So we have a very light, light footprint in our markets from a W-2 perspective, uh, work mostly with uh, veteran owned uh, businesses. It's 1099s, which kind of continues to fit within our kind of framework. Um, and then we, um, um, and then, you know, again, we'll also manage properties that, you know, most short-term vacation rental management companies would say, I'm not, man, you know, this is not a cabin or a beach home or something like that, you know, not something that we're going to jump into. So, you know, we want to obviously ultimately go to those vacation markets as well, but we're trying to be really disciplined and learning how to operate and make money in markets where there's less fat on the bone uh, and then kind of turning that infrastructure, you know, uh, and moving into vacation markets at that point. So when we say Walmart, Target, Nordstrom is kind of the three levels that I like to use, right? So right. I know it's, it's probably going to vary widely based on the size of the properties, but what's your typical type of property and like what's your average nightly rate? And I know using some of the tools, you know, mm -hmm. di um, dynamic pricing tools, it's going to fluctuate, but like ballpark, where would you say you guys are kind of at? Yeah, so we have three lines. We have a, uh, we have a premium standard uh, or I'm sorry, premium, intermediate, and budget line. Um, and so, you know, our budget line properties, um, you know, are, are, there's nothing, you know, but they're just nothing, you know, they're, they're pretty standard. They really cater to workforce housing. So lots of plumbers and electricians traveling for a month or two at a time, you know, looking for a lot of volume of bed space, um, not looking for something super fancy. Uh, those we would probably price out in the kind of, low to mid 100s a night on average. Uh, then our kind of intermediate line would be something more, you know, kind of traveling families, maybe traveling for work, you know, but for, again, you know, don't have as high end of a budget, right? That would be kind of your standard three, two, you know, home in town or track home, you know, nothing special about it, but, you know, a little bit probably nicer neighborhood and a little bit nicer finishings in the budget line. And those would go anywhere from kind of mid, 100s to kind of low 200s uh, and then our premium lines would be stuff with pools you know great views cabins more your kind of traditional vacation type properties or, or more luxury rentals inside of urban areas and those would go anywhere from you know kind of mid 200s up to you know six seven hundred dollars a night uh, kind of and there's a much wider range frankly on the premium side um, than there is in the other two categories. Yeah. And the, the reason I was, I was kind of picking at that a little bit because I found, I mean, a hundred to 150, that's still a solid price point. I found like in some of my lower seasons in some of my markets, if I went below like 70, 80 bucks a night, I started to attract some more like riffraff at the properties, which is what I was trying to avoid. So I was wondering like with you guys on some of more of the budget friendly ones, if you were finding similar things to keep your price points set a basically set a floor at a certain price point yeah i mean we would not have the only thing that would book for less than a hundred dollars a night would be like a small like you know we've got a tiny like a tiny house in the back of a main house or a mother-in-law we, we really like properties that have got a main house a mother-in-law suite and then a combined unit right so you can rent any of the three so the only things that for us would go less than a hundred dollars would be you know some of those really small um you know, kind of efficiency type units, often attracting kind of traveling nurses as a typical person that would stay in those for longer periods of time. So in, the, in those properties, we see l average longer term stays. And we frankly don't have much party problem with parties there. I would say where we have the most problem with parties is actually in the intermediate range. 
of where you've got a house that sleeps eight, 10 or 12 people, but it's not a super nice house. And as a result, you know, maybe on a slow weekend, the pricing bumps low, particularly if we haven't booked it already. And then somebody scoops it up as a last minute booking price, you know, so that that's where I think we really, that I would say those are the areas where we have the most problems. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah, which, which kind of makes sense. Um, I'm just joining you guys on my phone. It's my Wi-Fi keeps dropping off. Um, so. Your Wi-Fi is worse than mine, and I got a tornado warning right now. I don't know what's going on. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what's going on, bro. Like, it's least, you, you still can't get me? Oh, no, bro, your internet's brutal. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. Um, so what what is your primary function now that you've built these teams just kind of like we talk a lot about elevating from that like technician operator up through manager up to more of that ceo function so what does an average day in the life of you look like now where you're at 150 properties and you're continuing to grow what does that look like for you um so i'm much more growth focused at this point um and uh, and my wife is coming out with the dog and the puppy, so I'm <laughs> I may be back to being dad uh, and not CEO in all of about ten or fifteen seconds. Uh, so uh, say hello to my wife Rachel, who's coming out, and we've got. Uh, uh, hold on just a second. Excited. Yeah, let me get yeah. exciting times here. Um, so I would say I'm much more growth focused, um, and growth focused not in. in um, you know, we've started working with a lot of larger kind of, thank you so much. Don't be sorry. Uh, uh, kind of a lot of larger kind of, oh boy, two puppies. All right, puppy number two is here. Uh, <laughs> Love it. A lot of larger kind of institutional uh, style investors. So, you know, one of our investors came to us and we've got to buy him, you know, $15 million worth of houses by between now and the end of the year. Uh, and so that's where that kind of vertical integration comes in. And it's pretty powerful for us. It um, is, you know, people who are looking to jump into the space in a larger way, but don't want to onboard the headache of having to do all of it themselves. So that's what I, and again, back to the Walmart model, right? It's going to be very difficult to convince institutional investors to go buy these super nice vacation homes because the cash flow on those is not that, you know, is not as great just because, you know, and it's a huge risk, right? Whereas much less risky, you know, for someone, and I can't say some of their names, but if you look at some of the people who are playing in a larger way in the traditional single family rental home space, you know, they're interested in getting involved in the short term rental space. But there's a backstop. They want to make sure that the property's cash flow is long term rentals, right? There's their risk mitigation factor. So the million dollar beach home is not going to meet that threshold. And again, that's what feeds back into this whole Walmart model of at scale. Uh, and so that's where we are, you know, our target model. Um, and, and so that's where we're trying to, um, that's where my focus is really is trying to you know, continue to, you know, hone the discipline of the organization to be able to at scale, go out into these secondary and tertiary markets and really look for properties that would cash flow as long-term rentals. If something with a regulatory environment changed or for any reason, the short-term side didn't work out and then go and deploy large amounts of capital for some of these more institutional investors. I love it. I love it. Well, I want to, uh, I know we're getting close to our time here and I want to be respectful of your time and uh, kudos to you for, for making it happen today. I appreciate it. I know you got a bunch going on right now. Yeah. Oh, look at the pups. Dogs. Yeah. Pups back here. So I love uh, it. If you guys are listening to iTunes or Spotify. You can't see this. So you got to watch the YouTube video so you can check out the, the new baby pups here. But um, first I just want to acknowledge you for, the awesome work that you're doing. Like, I love how you've set this up, the mission behind it, like your focus, the way you've built the team, like it's just freaking awesome. And thank you for coming on here to share that. So before we get into the last question, where can folks learn more about you, what you guys are up to, uh, how can they get involved, all that good stuff? Yeah, uh, just go to patriotfamilyhomes.com, uh, www.patriotfamilyhomes.com. There's a contact form there. Uh, also feel free to shoot me an email. It's just uh, joe at patriotfamilyhomes.com. And uh, we'll, we'll be happy to talk to you and see if, figure out a way to help. I love it. I love it. 
Now, the last question that we ask all of our guests is, what is your number one secret to success with short-term rentals? Uh, really for us, it, it's, it's pricing. You know, I mean, that's the, I mean, that's at the end of the day, that's what it really all boils down to and, and thinking about that. And if I was going to give one piece of advice to folks, it's I see so many owners in particular that we manage for, they only look at their calendar looking forward, not backwards, right? I never, when I'm setting pricing and thinking about occupancy, I never look at bookings that we have going forward. I only look backwards. Why does that matter? So, you know, it, and we don't drop our prices, you know, if we don't have, you know, for example, if you showed up in Huntsville, Alabama today, we have a you know, couple of our properties that had a managed property, that had no bookings on the calendar going forward. And the owner was panicking. And I tell them, because when someone shows up in Huntsville and they need a place for six weeks, we're the only game in town, right? Because everybody else has their calendar chopped up, you know, in weekend stays. Now that's not necessarily as applicable if you're in a traditional vacation market, but if you're like us and more of what we would call utility markets um, that cater a lot to kind of traveling families and professionals, then being, you know, judicious and not backing off your pricing just because you don't have any bookings on the calendar looking forward will allow you to collect, you know, pick up those really long-term reservations that are ideal from a revenue standpoint and a kind of less headache to manage standpoint. Yeah, I love the discipline and I hope you guys can hear me because I don't know what else to do now. Um, but I love the discipline that I have heard throughout this. And I think it's such an important thing that Mike and I always try to let our listeners know is, is really looking at this like a business and kind of creating your system and procedures and not panicking and, and really holding on to your guns as to what you know it's going to work for your business. And, and again, like Mike said, I really appreciate you being here. I appreciate Tim for making the introduction and uh, really look forward to you guys kind of growing and taking over the nation. I have no doubt that that's going to happen in the, in, in the near future. And uh, you all heard it first. Our, uh, we, have, so we have the second puppy. So the first puppy, we're naming all the puppies after country music singers from this litter. So we oh, awesome. <laughs> and, uh, and what do we say? Loretta just came out. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Love it. Thanks, all Joe. Right. Appreciate Thanks, your time, man. Bye. Yeah, all the best. Thank, Thank you. Hey, STR Nation, if you enjoyed this episode, please make sure to hit that subscribe button and leave us a review. And in the comments, let us know what topics you want us to cover on upcoming episodes, and we'll make sure to get that in the books for you. And if you really want to learn how to launch, automate, and scale your short-term rental business, if you want to go deeper, then check out our free masterclass at strsecrets.com.